Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Internet Citadel Show. We have a fantastic show lined up for you tonight. We are unbelievably pumped and excited. We have special t-shirts for this edition, and we have a rock star with us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. But before we uh, introduce our guests, we're going to let you know who we are once again, uh, real quickly. Um, my wonderful co-host, co-creator, and very, very dear friend, Kathy has just an unbelievable resume of experience. She is currently the National Marketing and Sales Director with a great bridal shoe company called Bliss Bridal Shoes. So go check that out, blissbridalshoes.com. She's got experience as an operations manager and sales manager for over 25 years with a Fortune 500 company. She's got network marketing experience dating back to the mid 80s along with affiliate marketing experience going back to the early 90s of which I like to affectionately call her the affiliate marketing queen because this woman can sell uh, items online like I have never seen anyone else and on that note she's also an eBay power seller and a top rated seller with eBay she has certificates on her wall to prove it we'll have to have her move her camera to show us that <laughs> later on but without further ado I'd like to introduce my co-host and wonderful friend Kathy Stower hey Kathy Brian, hi, good evening. It's so good to be back this week. Um, I am so excited about our guest tonight, too. As um, he said, you know, check out the t-shirts here. We're rocking, baby. Um, listen, I just want to tell you about my dear friend and co-host, uh, Brian Kelly here. Brian has over 23 years of software experience. He's a software engineer. He actually has been um, in internet marketing and uh, affiliate marketing for somewhere between 20 and 23 years as well. Um, he also has put together the program that you see down below, Tweet Performance. So if there's anybody that is looking for something to work uh, with their Twitter, please make sure and check that out. He also co-owned a travel-based MLM for about six and a half years. Brian is a talented individual. I love working with him every week, and I'm not going to take up any more time. Brian, let's introduce our awesome guest tonight. It's time to rock on, baby. So uh, <laughs> what I'd like to do is introduce a very, very special guest. We met him very recently, a very unbelievably full of integrity individual. I know that sounded kind of funky, but that's the way it is. He is a, a full of integrity individual. That's a new coin phrase we're going to catch for tonight. Our special guest is a professional speaker and the creator and author of Craig Doeswalt's Rockstar System for Success. And it's all about how to achieve rockstar status in your industry. His background includes touring with Guns N' Roses as Axl Rose's personal manager. Very, very interesting, and I think he's going to share a story or two with us tonight, so be sure to stick on with us. He's also uh, worked with Air Supply as the band's personal assistant. Uh, Craig was also an award-winning copywriter, working as a senior copywriter for a Los Angeles-based ad agency until opening up his own ad agency, Green Room Design and Advertising, which was named the 2002 Santa Clarita Valley Chamber of Commerce Small Business of the Year. And for those of you that don't know, that's just, uh, just north of Los Angeles, another thriving, bustling community there. Craig combines his backgrounds in both music and marketing, and he teaches numerous ways to save a ton of money on marketing and advertising and how to become perceived as a celebrity and an expert in your business where potential clients will come to you instead of you having to go after them. And that's the topic of our show tonight. Uh, Craig and his wife, Natasha, co-own Peak Models and Talent, a modeling and talent agency based in Los Angeles. And in only 10 short years, this small business has become a multi-million dollar success story with more than 1,000 clients and representing more than 300 models and actors. Now, part of Peak uh, models and talent success is directly attributed to using the techniques of Craig Doeswalt's Rockstar System for Success. So you will definitely want to listen in very intently to what Craig has to say tonight. Craig was recently named Marketer of the Year, awarded the best speaker and marketer in James Malinchek's prestigious Big Money Speaker Platinum VIP program. Whew. Okay, that's it for our show. We thank you for coming on. That was a big intro. No, no, thank no. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Without further ado, I would like to introduce Mr. Craig Doeswalt. How you doing, Craig? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Are we done? That, is, that was the fastest interview I've ever done. That's great. <laughs> We're done. Thank you. Absolutely. Hi, guys. How are you? Well, thank you for we having me on the show, too. So, thank you. Well, you Absolutely. Bet. We've just been um, excited about having you come on this week. So with everything that Brian just told us about you, um, why don't you tell us a little bit in your own words about 
what's going on with you and your background? Uh, my background? Well, I, uh, let's see. I'll start back when I was five. No, we won't go that far back. <laughs> All right. Um, just out of college, I got a job working at the uh, Westbury Music Fair in Long Island. And I bring up this story because it does have rele relevance to the rock star system. But I was working at the Westbury Music Fair in, in Long Island, and I was a runner backstage, and basically uh, big acts would come in, do a show or two, and then leave, and I would get them drinks backstage. I'd pick them up at the airport. I would uh, take them to the hotel. I would take them to sound check, and I was basically a glorified runner backstage. And Air Supply came in and did a show one night, and on a Friday night I worked the show, and I was working backstage. I met all the band members. And then on Saturday night, my mother wanted to go see the show. So I said, all right, fine, we'll go see the show, even though I didn't want to go see Air Supply, because I had just seen them the night before. So the oh. second night I go to the show, I'm, I'm uh, with my mom, and uh, this big security guard comes up to me, and he says, you were working here last night, weren't you? And I said, yes, I was. And he goes, how much do you make a week here? And I said, about $150 a week. But in 1983, not bad. <laughs> and... Um, and uh, he said, how would you like to quadruple that? And I said, oh, my gosh, what do I have to do? And he <laughs> said, well, we're looking, <laughs> we're looking for a new band assistant to tour with us. So uh, to make a long story short, the next day I, toured, I went on tour. There was a limousine at my house that drove me to the airport, took me on a Learjet to Wallingford, Connecticut, and I wow. toured with Air Supply for seven years. And the reason why I tell that story is because I always tell people, you never know who's watching um, when you're working, even if it's the most menial job in the world. I got drinks backstage. I was basically a gopher, a glorified gopher. And from that, it parlayed into touring with Air Supply for seven years. And from that, I then, after Air Supply, I toured with Guns N' Roses as Axl Rose's manager for four years during the User Illusion World Tour. So it was the biggest tour to this day, I think, in the history of rock and roll. We toured with Metallica. We toured with um, other bands. And it was just an unbelievable experience and four years with Guns N' Roses. And I'm happy to say that uh, I, I'm a normal person now and, and <laughs> nothing, nothing, yeah, right, nothing bad really happened. I do have, I'll show you guys my, uh, way back there is my double platinum album that I got from Guns N' Roses. And uh, nice. it's basically, yeah, it's, it's a major collector's item. It's worth like Twenty million dollars, I think. Uh, okay. Well, hey, I mean, you heard Brian. He said I do really good on eBay, Craig. So you know, when you're ready, that's you're ready. right. I, okay, let me know. I, I hear I got lots of good stuff for you to sell. <laughs> so, um, so I toured with Guns N' Roses for four years, and it was an incredible four years. But I learned a lot about marketing in those four years, and I I had a marketing degree from college, but I really learned about outside the box thinking how to get people in seats, how to learn to run a small business. Even though Guns N' Roses was a huge business, they used a lot of principles that small businesses can use to get people to come to them to see concerts. And all I did was parlay that into um, what I call the rock star system for success, how to achieve rock star status in your industry. And basically it's how to use, I, I combined my advertising career of uh, copywriting and graphic design with my music career and I came up with this system that in only, I think it's one year and four months, 16 months has, has gone um, quite crazy. I, I'm uh, very blessed, as they, as they say. And we can attest to that because we were at your event uh, just a little while ago here in Los Angeles. Uh, and I want to tell yes, everybody here, are. I want to tell everybody here what we told Craig, because uh, Kathy and I have been to many of these uh, similar events. And, you know, we have a lot of people to compare Craig to. And we say, without a sh beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is a gentleman with the most integrity we've ever met that has been up on a stage that does what he does as a professional speaker. Uh, just a phenomenal individual. He will talk to anybody and everybody when he's done talking. Other speakers sometimes will just duck out the back door. Everything about Craig that, that both Kathy and I witnessed, this guy is a material, and that's why we are so blessed to have him on our show, and we, we really do appreciate that, Craig. But we want to... Well, thank you. You're thank very, you. very welcome. Thank you. Uh, we were there. We, Kathy and I do have an idea about what this Rockstar System for Success is all about, but we'd rather it come from the expert mouth. And uh, could you give us a, an overview of exactly what the Rockstar System for Success really is and what it, it, it consists of? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I was before the Rockstar System, I was um, America's shoestring budget coach. And I was teaching people how to save a ton of money on marketing and advertising. 
and I went to a mastermind meeting, and at the mastermind meeting, everyone is saying, we love the shoestring budget thing, that's a good idea, and we all want to save money on marketing and advertising, but you have this incredible background, this very uh, very high-profile background. Why are you not using that in, in teaching people how to save money on marketing and advertising? So I said, all right, you know, I, I listened to everybody, and, and I came up with the Rockstar system. And basically, it's a system, I use the acronym Rockstar. R is reinvent yourself. O is overindulge on the internet. Uh, C is collaborate with like-minded people. K is keep it simple, stupid is basically um, um, learning how to use the internet to market your small business. Uh, S is stand out like a celebrity and expert. Uh, how do you spell Rockstar? R-O-C-K-S-T-T <laughs> is take, take it to the limit is multiple streams of income. A is abundance, share the wealth. I believe you have to give back, uh, otherwise it will all be taken away. And the last R are the Rockstar rules that I live by every day. So anyway, I came up with this acronym, Rockstar, and it's just, uh, it's really, really taken off. And I, I tell everybody that it's called the Rockstar System for Success for a reason, be, and because it's easy to do. It's very simple to do. A rock star could even do it. I didn't call it the rocket science system for success <laughs> because uh, I don't want to overwhelm people. I, I think that people need to go back to the basics in small business, do all the fundamentals first so they don't get overwhelmed so that they can achieve more later. So I, I really, really stress with my coaching clients to really do all the fundamentals first, sign up for Facebook, get a website, do the blogging, do all these fundamental things first, then write a small book, and we'll talk about that in a little while, uh, to achieve the rock star status, the celebrity status in your field. And I get all these, uh, I got this, uh, I won't mention any names, because I'm sure this is being recorded, but there was a doctor that yeah. signed up, at, you guys were at Wealth Builders Summit, uh, yes. where I met you originally, yeah. and uh, there was a, a doctor, a lady doctor, who signed up for my course. I remember this. And the next day, she, yeah, the next day she comes. I'm not going to say exactly what it is, but the <laughs> next day she comes back. She comes back to me and hands the course back to me, and she goes, uh, "Craig, I, I think you're a great person and everything, but this is too easy for me." And I said, "Okay, that's fair, but um, how many? Do you have a website up?" No. Well, that's why I'm here because I need to create a website. Well, have you written any books? Yes, I've written five books. When did you write the books? 1988. How many have you sold? Well, not many, and that's why I'm here. So she didn't do any of the things. She didn't have a website. She had <laughs> nothing going on, but she's a doctor, and she was too smart for my easy course. So she handed it back to me. So I use this as an example all the time of what the rock star system is. It's very easy. Now, I was a creative director for an ad agency, and I know how to do the hard stuff. But there's things that you need to do first to get your small business up and running. Then we can implement the hard stuff later. But if everyone does just the basics, just shows up, they would be very, very successful. But most people just don't do that. Yeah, and there was a lot well, more to that great story, but I agree. Yeah. We should not go into that just yeah. yet. It was all clean, by the way. For yeah, those of you that are wondering, 100% clean. Totally it was just, clean. It was just very, very funny. It's all clean. Yes. Well, in the and the thing about it is, if they, you know, if they follow him, at some point he's going to tell the whole story. See, that's that's the thing. Right. I think. Right. It's exactly. Right. The, yeah. She she was so stuck on the rock star thing being so easy, she didn't even <laughs> wait to hear that there are advanced stuff that you can do. So. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's <laughs> very funny. Well, you know, um, and I think Brian and I can attest that just the way that you format and and the fun that you put into it, the humor, the the intensity, it is just, it was such a phenomenal learning experience, but um, how do you stand out from your competition? Now, if I went to the grocery store right now, I'm sure I'd stand out. I live in Grass Valley, you know, there's not a lot of people running around with Rockstar t-shirts on, but so how do you yeah. stand out from the competition so that you become the go-to person um, in your field? Uh, I use, personally, a lot of outside-the-box things, and I guess I'll share some of those now, but Oh, okay. um, the uh, I want to just with Guns N' Roses for example when I toured with Guns N' Roses we we uh, I'll give you an example Guns N' Roses we would do a show say in Denver Colorado the next show would be in Kansas City Missouri and let's just say I'm not saying that this ever happened remember I, I have the disclaimers going not saying that this <laughs> ever happened but if Guns N' Roses was in Denver and then the next show was in Kansas City 
and Kansas City and the Kansas City tickets weren't selling well, then maybe in Denver, Colorado, to stand out from the competition, maybe we would all have a meeting at eight o'clock in the morning and maybe one of us would say maybe we should throw a television out the eighth floor window into the swimming pool from the hotel to get into the news and maybe the other assistant would be downstairs calling the news saying, hey, I think I see a television flying outside of Axel Rose's room. You might want to get here and maybe the news would show up and maybe we had a statement prepared for them and uh, maybe, maybe we would get into the news the next day and somehow or another, the show in Kansas City that was very low on ticket sales would go through the roof because we got into the news. Now, I do say this at my seminars. Please don't start throwing hotels. I mean, you can't throw hotels. Don't start throwing televisions out hotel windows because that's a marketing really idea. I love it. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't do it. No, uh, here in Grass Valley, we could like throw roast beef in the meat department. There's not a lot there of There you go. Here, you know? Anything to get in the news. That's what I'm talking about. There you go. <laughs> so, and, 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 and I use that in my seminars because if you start thinking that way, what can I do as a small business to get into the news and get into the media? Now, Guns N' Roses obviously took it to an extreme. But there are ways for you to get the word out that you exist. And I, I do these outside-the-box um, uh, things that I talk at my seminar about, and I'll share some of those. I have like 10, sometimes I have like 20 of them, and I use about 10 everywhere I go. But I'll, I'll share a couple of them with them right now. So say uh, I call this one um, Rockstar Campaign. Now, it's interesting right now because there's a campaign going on in Santa Clarita where I live. Um, everyone's uh, these people are running for city council as we speak and the election is today and we're going to find out who our three new city council members are but I, I ran for the new hall school board about a year ago or six months ago I lost but I uh, I wanted to run because my kids were in the elementary school and I thought it would be good to give back but while I was running for the new hall school board I I realized that I'm allowed to put my my a sign that has my name on it, a big gigantic sign with big letters that says Craig Doeswalt, Newhall School Board. And I thought to myself, what a great idea for marketing that all you have to do is small business, run for office in your local community. You get to put signs all over your community with your name on it. And then you can put your website address on the bottom promoting your business. Now the idea here is to lose on purpose because if you win, <laughs> then you actually got to serve. But I call it Rockstar <laughs> Campaign. Uh, and it's a way to get your name on everyone's grass lawn <laughs> for free because you're allowed to do that. I know. But, but now, once again, I don't expect a lot of people to do that. But imagine if you did oh, uh, the publicity you, you would get. But the idea is not to show up for the debates and everything because if you win, then you actually have to do the job. <laughs> and then it's going to take away from your job. So that's Rockstar Campaign. I have another one called Rockstar Chauffeur. Now, I use this one because this one's really good. You get like five people, men or women, dressed in black suits, wearing you know a, a black tie, and they dress like chauffeurs. And what they do is they go to the airport and they stand at the baggage claim of, say, you're doing a trade show, and you're in Las Vegas at a trade show, and and everyone is coming in to the trade show, and you're going to the trade show, and you hire five people to stand at the baggage claim, and they stand with big signs that say Rockstar, Craig Doeswalt www.craigdoeswalt.com and they're standing at the airport at the baggage claim and everyone else that's going to the trade show is looking at this or these five chauffeurs thinking to themselves wow this rock star dude has five limousines waiting for him he must be huge and, and they just stand there all day long with these signs and go to every baggage claim for every flight that comes in so that's called rock star chauffeur and imagine doing that at all these at every trade show you go to, everyone will be talking about you. Did you see that rock star guy? He had five limousines waiting for him. This guy is enormous. Oh, my gosh. So that's that. And then the last one I'll share, the last one uh, that I do is my most famous one. Is um, But you have to write a small book first, and we're going to talk about small books in a little while. But um, okay. I, believe in writing, uh, I believe in writing these small books and these books uh, to promote your business. And if you write these books, like I wrote uh, Rockstar System for Success, how to achieve rock star status in your industry. So what I do is I take about 10 to 20 books and I put them in a backpack and I go to the local Barnes and Noble or Borders bookstore and I walk in 
and I go to a section that I think my book might look good and someone might find uh -huh. my yeah. book interesting in that <laughs> section. So I go to the business section and I take the books out of my book key, my back hat, backpack, and I look around to see if anyone's coming and I put the 20 <laughs> books on the shelf at the Barnes and Noble and I call it reverse <laughs> shoplifting. Uh, yeah. And what you do <laughs> is, and then you imagine people taking your book off and going to the counter and, and having them scan it and they're like, well, we don't have this book anymore. We should order more. And they call me the publisher. So anyway, so it's rock stars sh reverse shoplifting and basically putting reverse. your books on every bookshelf in America for free. Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, I can't arrest you for that, right? <laughs> right. So I those are just some out for that. You're just putting stuff in. You're not taking. I agree. You're giving back, as they say. So anyway, so uh, those are some, some outside-the-box techniques that I use and but, but standing out from the competition is I do a lot of small seminars around town I just spoke today for 15 people at the Association of Women Entrepreneurs I'm not above speaking to very small groups because those 15 people will tell 15 other people will tell 15 other people and so on and so on so I tend to do this I get in the press a lot I do radio shows I do TV shows I do internet TV shows I do anything that anyone asks me because you never know who is going to be watching or who's going to be listening, just like you never know who's going to be watching um, me work backstage at the Westbury Music Fair with Air Supply. So I do a lot of these little things, and basically I just tell people to just show up. If you show up, that's half the battle, and that's really how you stand out from the competition, is basically just showing up. All right, that was that was awesome, excellent awesome. stuff. It gets better every time we hear it. Uh, it's yeah. funny you got us in stitches once again. Uh, now, Craig, you used to be what was known as the the shoestring budget guys. You said earlier, and you know now you have a very successful brand with this rock star theme that you have going. Why is having a title such a key, you know, to your self promotion to your success? So, how did, can you right. expand on that? Yeah, the, uh, the rock star title is working. There's so many. There are how many? All right, I'm going to take a vote. How many marketing speakers do you think are out there right now in the world? In the world? Oh, like Probably. Ten, tens thousands. of thousands. Tens of thousands. Thousands. Yeah, yeah, a lot. And I get asked to speak on tons of stages across America because I put one little word in front of my boot camp. I put rock star marketing boot camp instead of just marketing or something I put the word rock star in front of the word marketing and all of a sudden I'm different than every other marketing guy out there because yeah. I do I have music I have fun and we do it the rock star way so I but but then again I also used to be America's shoestring budget coach which is a more straightforward boring kind of title but once again that worked very very well I was when I was America's shoestring budget coach the power of a title is that I wrote a book called Marketing Your Small Business on a Shoestring Budget, and I was America's Shoestring Budget Coach. And two days after I wrote, after that book was released, the Marketing Your Small Business on a Shoestring Budget, two days later, I got a telephone call from a, mark, uh, from a casting director in Los Angeles, and she was casting a new television reality TV show called We Mean Business. Um, I was one of the finalists. I had a screen test. I was one of the three finalists for the marketing leg of We Mean Business. And I lost out to Bill Rancic. He, uh, he was the winner of uh, Apprentice Season 1. He ended up getting the job. But the fact that I was one of those three finalists for, that, for my own reality TV show just because I wrote a book called Marketing Your Small Business on a Shoestring Budget. A casting director happened to see the book and she said, she called me up, I still have the, um, the, uh, the, uh, um, her message on my answering machine. I still have it because I couldn't believe it. And she said, she says, I hear that you're an expert on marketing your small business on a shoestring budget. We would like to have you come in for a screen test. And I, I talked to her, I said, how did you hear I was an expert? She goes, well, I saw you wrote a book, so you must be an expert. Now, little does she know that I self-published the book. And but it's all perception again that yeah. there's a book out there that is perceived that I wrote this book. They don't have to know it was self-published, but the perception is I wrote a book and I've written five books now. 
So I must be an expert in the field because I wrote a book. And that's why I, I, I tell everyone that they have to write a small book to promote their business. And what happens after that is unbelievable. In the last, well, I'll talk about more about that in the um, book section. But um, the title, the, the importance of a title is, 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 is a very extremely important. I mean, I, I cannot emphasize how important a title is. And it has to be a very simple title. It has to be a title everyone knows, like shoestring budget. Everyone knows that means to save money. Rockstar, I don't need to explain what rockstar means. So pick something that everyone knows and it's simple and just call yourself that and go with it. I love it. Well, you know, we know that you are um, known as the rockstar dude. Um, and a lot of people, and we found, and we found actually when we were at your boot camp recently, and actually prior to that and since, that people have been talking about your write a book in 30 days. So um, tell us how that program works. How do you write a book in 30 days? <laughs> you, you buy my course. That's quick. And, uh, that's you quick. Buy <laughs> I mean, that's quick. Uh, it is quick, but you know what? I. Uh, it, it's, it's chunking it down, basically. Everyone gets so overwhelmed with writing a book because they think they have to write like a, a big book, a big, thick book. You know, a book can be 50 tips on how to do this or 50 quotes from, like my next book, I'm writing a book right now, and it's basically taking rock, star, rock stars, real life rock stars, music rock stars, and taking their quotes and correlating it to small businesses or marketing how that quote fits in with marketing. And all I'm doing is taking a quote and then writing one or two sentences on how that relates to marketing and how that you can use that in your business. I'll do about 50 to 75 of those and put a cover on it, put a back cover on it, and it'll be like a 96 page book and it'll take me literally a week to write and it's a book, but it's just a book. So everyone gets so overwhelmed with writing a book, they have to write all this information and they have to tell everything I know but really, if they just chunk it down to a couple of little tips, tips on what you do every single day in your business, and just chunk it down to little, like I wrote, my books are mainly like 10 chapters. Each chapter has about six tips, and each tip in the chapter has about uh, two or three bullet points that I expand into paragraphs. And that's the whole book, and I do about 60 of those per book. And everyone gets to have little tips, and they don't have to read the whole thing in one sitting. They could just read a little chunk here, a little chunk there. It's not like it doesn't flow from one to the beginning to end. It's just chunks of tips. And if you chunk it down like that, then it makes it very easy because, for example, if you were to write two blog posts every day, and the blog post had something to do with your business, you could take 60 blog posts at the end of the month, you have 30 times two, 60 blog posts, and just put those into a book, and now you have a book, and you wrote it in 30 days. And all you have to do is write two blog posts every single day, take the blog posts, put them into a book, formalize them into chapters, and then you have a book. And there's numerous ways that I talk about how to write a book, and, and, and interestingly enough, I think it's up to 52 now. In the last nine and a half, maybe 10 months, 52, five, two people, have written books using that how to write a book in 30 day thing. So That's it does work. Phenomenal. Yeah. That is it does work. You and, know, uh, when we were at your at your boot camp, we couldn't believe how many you had stacked yes. up on the stage. Like and people were still coming up big. and bringing yeah. their completed books to you. But I got to tell I know, you, I, right, I was one of those that felt like you had to write this big novel, right, to put yeah. everything out there. Yeah. And back in January, when I got your book, I, I really, I was amazed, because it was thin, how much information, how clear and concise and informative it was. And, you know, yeah. it was this big, and I'm thinking, wow. So now I know, because, you, you know, you told us that. But before that, I was thinking, novel, it's going to be a lot of chapters, and, you know. And you know what's interesting? You know what's interesting is that um, those, the, my books, I've cut out all the fat. If you look at a 300-page mm -hmm. book on business, there's a lot of crap in there that you really just don't need. I just wanted to just tell me what to do. Right. Just get tell me a uh, headline, uh, get to the point right away, and then I can move on because I need to do it because I need to make money. 
So I don't, I can't write, read a 300 page book on marketing. Uh, I just read David Bach's new book. Um, oh, what was the name of it? Um, I forget the name of it, but it was like 10 steps on how to do something. But it was a 120 page book. I literally let, read it at the pool last week in Palm Springs in like two and a half hours, read the whole thing start to finish. And I said to myself, this guy must have read the rock star system. <laughs> it was such it was, it's good i like those books you know i like them well you you shared with us uh both at the wealth builders event and at your rockstar boot camp uh at both events you shared with us something you do that i had never heard of before at least before the wealth builders event when you first uh, told us about it you do something very interesting rather than using business cards what is it that you do uh versus carrying around a stack of business cards I carry around a stack of books instead. So, um, and here's the deal. You know, you know, you buy, you know, pens with your logo on it, and you buy hats with your logo on it, and golf balls with your logo on it, and all those things. Those old things cost between 47 cents for a pen to about four dollars for a golf cap, or maybe five or six dollars for a mug, or something that with your logo on it. And business cards, same thing. You got to pay for your business cards and all the time. And the business card only has your telephone number and an email. My thing is, and I do this because I'm a rock star speaker. I am not a rock star. I don't claim to be a rock star. But since it's my brand and I have to be consistent with my brand, I have to follow the rock star moniker, let's call it. So Bono from U2, I doubt, is ever going to walk up to anyone in a bar and say, Hello, my name is Bono. Here's my business card. I'm playing at the local uh, forum down the street. Would you like to come see my concert? Good point. So I have to stick with that. So I decided business cards are, everyone has business cards. So how do we stand out from the competition? So what I do is I hand out books. And the books cost me about $1.13 each if I print 2,000 books. But think of a $1.13 book versus, okay, the business cards probably three cents, four cents, five cents, but you gotta buy you know, 10,000 business cards to get it for that price. So you buy, you have all these business cards, but the bang of a five cent business card versus a dollar 13 book, I'm going to, if, if there's two speakers, if there's two people there trying to get my business and one of them hands me a business card and one of them says, here's my book, take this instead of a business card, who do you think I'm gonna talk to more? I'm gonna say to myself, this guy's got something. He must be so successful because he's giving me a book. How could he afford to do that? These things cost $12, $15 each. They don't understand that it's only a dollar each. So the perception is this guy's successful. He's got it together. He was able to organize in his mind how to write a book. I want to work with that guy. So um, I do this at networking events all the time. I'll always stand in a corner and I'll hand out one book to somebody and he'll, he or she will say, why is it called the rock star system? And that's a perfect question for me because then I say, well, because I used to tour with Guns N' Roses, I was Axl Rose's manager, and the conversation goes, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, please tell me a Guns N' Roses story. So I tell a Guns N' Roses story, and within five minutes, there's 15 or 20 people that want to hear the story, and I <laughs> hand out my books to everybody, and then they say, so what do you do now? And I say, I speak, and I have a boot camp coming up, and da, da 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 and inevitably one or two or three or four or five of them come to the boot camp and it's a great great networking tool that no one else does because they want to hand out business cards just like everybody else yeah perfect so um brian um why don't you tell everybody what happens if they if they click on craig's nose or on the banner down below? absolutely <laughs> almost got him with that <laughs> Yeah, for everyone watching, Sorry, did you click on my notes? Yeah, there have been uh, there have been several. Don't touch it. It's just they're going to click on it. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, there have been uh, several inferences to uh, Craig's Rockstar System for Success, and uh, you can get all the information you want on that by clicking on either Craig's nose, just to the side of us, right on his nose. It won't work anywhere else. No, I'm kidding. Anywhere on his face, or on the banner that's beneath us, all the way down beneath us. Click on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a static picture. We're not talking about the live picture. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> That's great. It's not a video game. <laughs> okay. And you, yeah, really, find the nose. <laughs> and, and on there you will see uh, lots, lots of great information, but you'll see testimonial after testimonial after testimonial in there, both in written form and in video form, 
uh, and these aren't just canned testimonials. Kathy and I got up and did one. We were not given a script. We were not told what to say. We were just told to say, you know, give a, give our uh, our overview of the event. And so we just went, and that's how they did it with everybody. So you'll see a bunch of genuine testimonials back there. Again, I reiterate, this is a man of integrity. Uh, if you are going to follow anybody in to, to improve your business or to start a business, in either case, this is the man I recommend you follow. This is the man I'm sure Kathy recommends you follow. Click on his nose or on the banner Absolutely. beneath. And uh, definitely okay. check it out and try to get to uh, Los Angeles in September. It gives you plenty of time to, to arrange for travel if necessary. But definitely, definitely give it a hard, hard look, and uh, you you will not be sorry. So let's move on, Kathy. What what's our next? Thank you. Grilling question. Oh, you betcha. You're you betcha. welcome. That's You're welcome. beautiful. You're welcome. Well, you know what I want to know. What did publishing these books? I, and by the way, I got to tell you, when I found out that it cost a dollar thirteen, I was like, holy smokes! I was yeah. thinking that it was, you know, like a lot. So that was, that was pretty cool. That was eye opening. Um, but anyway, what did publishing these books do for your speaking career? How did how did that help you? So um, let me just say something about the self publishing part of it. Um, I oh, self please. I yeah I self publish books because. Um, my wife and I, my wife especially, but at one point I was also our agents. We represent models and actors. Uh, we have an agency in Los Angeles. And we know how many submissions we get every day. My wife gets 400 submissions every day of people that want to be models or actors. 400 a day. Wow. So imagine, yeah. So imagine if you want to be a writer and you want to write a book and you submit your idea for a book to a literary agent, which is what you have to do first right. to get your book published. So they get 100 to 200 to 400 submissions every day on people that want to write books. You're going to get lost in a stack of, po uh, stack of papers, and then say you're one of the 1% that does get an agent, then the agent has to find a publisher to find who you are to, to publish your book, and that takes another year to 18 months, and then after that to publish the book, they all of a sudden have control of the book, and it's a, basically a two to two and a half year process for the 0.5% that actually get to publish their books. Um, my thing is wow. self-publish your book because, first of all, in two years, the idea that you had, if you want to publish it, is now gone. That idea has been done 10 times already. So now you want, I, I believe in self-publishing the book, and like Kathy just said, it's only a dollar thirteen each if you print two thousand and I have a person that I use in my Rockstar system that will lay out your book design the front cover design the back cover lay out ninety six pages for you all you have to do, do is give her a Microsoft Word document she'll lay the whole book out email it to the printer the printer prints it you never even have to see it except for proofreading and that process is five hundred dollars for someone to lay out the book, design the front and back cover. I have that resource if people come to my boot camp. The printing, wow, like I said, it is. And the printing yeah, is like a dollar thirteen a book if you print like 2000 and you get your book done in 30 days if you follow my system, 30 days to write it and about 30 days to print it. So in two months you can have a book done in your hands and you can start promoting yourself instead of waiting for two years and I don't do that. The rock star system is not about waiting. It's about doing things right now, getting things done so people can find you right away. And I, I don't wait. I don't procrastinate anymore. But that book, as soon as I released that first book, like I said, I almost got the reality TV show. Um, and all of a sudden, I became known as an expert immediately. And I started getting asked to do speaking engagements everywhere, even though I was really focused in the beginning on writing. I all of a sudden got booked on all these speaking engagements because of my book. And I truly believe I have, wow. I have 79 coaching clients right now. And I, like I said, there's about 52 people who have written books using this system. And what's happening is most of the people that have written the books, and I'm like saying most of the people, are now getting calls right, right now for speaking engagements, and they're not even speakers. Wow. They find them. There's this lady that wrote a book on wedding events. And she goes, she wrote a book, she took my course, wrote the book, and she just wanted to sell it and give it to some clients. And she didn't write, she didn't do a ton of copies. But all of a sudden she goes, I'm getting calls for speaking engagements all over the place because they think I'm an expert at wedding, engage, wedding planning. 
And I said, exactly. And she, she's now a speaker. And, and she had no intention of being a speaker. So this is what happens. And it's just, if you don't want to be a speaker, that's fine too. But it just does something immediately for your business. There's a woman I work with that's a mortgage broker. She just did a book on how to write mortgages and, and uh, how to get a lender and what the process is all about. And especially right now, that's so needed. She gives them out to potential clients and she's getting tons of business because everyone's like, well, this lender has a book and this one doesn't. I'm going with the one that wrote the book. Amazing. So it's, it's yeah. I mean, how many people would have thought when they saw the title to this show about how to be perceived as an expert and a celebrity in your business or entity <laughs> that it was all going to be and stem from writing a book? I wouldn't have thought yeah. that. When I first saw I you know. on stage and that came out because you, you, you opened up very well telling about Guns N' Roses, Axl Rose. I especially love the one about him laying on his back and shooting the moth, but I won't give that one away. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, is that so funny? Yes, yeah, it was very funny. <laughs> but the way uh, you led into the the whole book theme, I was like, my gosh, I did, I had no idea that this guy was going to be about writing books. You know, Rockstar System for Success, yeah. Axl Rose stories, all this. And I was like, this makes nothing but sense. And I got to, yeah. real quick, Kathy, I got to ask him something. And you don't have to answer this, Craig, if it's a if it's like an industry trade secret, but it's it's killing me. Uh -huh. Why ninety six pages? <laughs> Uh, just because I wanted it to be un very unoverwhelming. Unoverwhelming? I figured less than 100 pages, there's two reasons. Less than 100 pages sounded better. Okay. Anything over 100 just seems like a lot. But there is a printing aspect to it. I wondered. That, um, yeah, printers print on, this is what I was told, I'm not a printer, but printers print 16 uh, pages on a sheet of paper. So you want to do things in uh, multiples of 16. So 16, 32, 48, 64 is the smallest book you can do to have a spine. You know, the little, yeah. you have to, uh, to have a spine, you need at least 64 pages. And I just felt 96 pages, which is a multiple of 16, was thick enough to be um, determined to be a real book. You know, so 96 pages. So all my books will forever be 96 pages. Oh my gosh, uh, Kathy, I want you to hit the next question, but I just thought of something I forgot. I wanted to do this so bad, uh, so I'm just going to do it. Oh. But I wanted everybody just to know okay. that Craig not only uh, you know talks the talk, but he walks the walk, but he also passes it on to his own family. Here we have oh, yeah. his son, Tyler Doeswalt. I got the book, and guess what? Uh -huh. Guess what? It's got an autograph right there. <laughs> so when Rockstar Jr. goes on the stage, I'm going to say, I have his book from when he was just 10 years old. I've got the young man. This is, it's yeah. a real book. Yeah. No kidding. I've, I've got my kids reading it. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, you know, you know, what's, you know what's amazing about that? I mean, you know, and, and I'm so proud, obviously. I honestly, and you guys said, I, I come from integrity, and I really do. I honestly... Honestly, did not I changed one word in his book? It was the word <clears throat> he wrote. Voila, W A L A, and I changed it to Voila, V I O L A. Uh, he's a great writer. He's a very good speller. But I really wanted the book, and you have the book, and I don't know if you've read it, but you can tell that the, a ten-year-old wrote the book. But it has great information in it that I didn't know about blogging. Yeah, I know. But it's he. He is now. Get this. Uh, author 101 University I'm speaking at in October. Tyler just got booked to speak at Author 101 <laughs> University in October. <laughs> right Isn't on. That great? Yeah, that no. is Isn't great. That so cool? And I'm, I'm a techie yeah. and a software way, engineer. A, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I've got to do it. Got to do a shout out here. Uh, Melody is on, and she said she loves you, Craig, and she enjoyed the call earlier. And she said Marilyn's going to be so jealous because she's in Europe. <laughs> So we got to say a big shout out to Marilyn too, Melody, so she doesn't feel so bad that she's not the Keemer on twins. So yes, love them. Yeah, the Keemer twins. Yeah, they were just on girls. your yeah, they were just on your show, and they uh, they're great. I mean, I just did a coaching call with her literally like an hour and a half ago. <laughs> well, we were sitting next to them at your boot camp. Yeah, so yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, we love them. Well, listen, you know. I want to say you've gone from zero to sixty in less than a year in your speaking career, and that is that is absolutely phenomenal. You know, so I mean, you're rocking, baby. <laughs> you're rocking. <laughs> so, yeah, baby. Um, 
What, what I want to know, I mean, this is this. I'm sure everybody else wants to know too. What do you equate your success to, Greg? Well, I did. Um, I have I have seven. I have seven. 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 Can you see that? Seven <laughs> rock star <laughs> rules that I go by, and I did these seven things uh, in 2008 and launched the Rockstar system January 2009. So I've been doing this for now, I think it's 14 months, the Rockstar system. But I did these seven things, and they're very, once again, they're very basic, very, very easy things. But most people just don't do these things. But I did these things, and I truly believe that these seven things helped me get to where I am so fast. The first one was get rid of clutter. It's a very easy thing to do, but no one does it. My desk, if you panned the room, has no papers on it. It's very clean. Um, I, I took it to the next level because I'm A D D H D Q G E B whatever that is, <laughs> and, uh, I, and my gar <laughs> my garage has labels of everything in boxes, and I, I took it to the next level. But because of that, my mind is totally free. I'm totally clear, so I can be very creative and get things done instead of worrying what's on the bottom of this pile next to me next to my desk. So get rid of the clutter. Number two is stop procrastinating. Now everyone says to do that, but I actually did it, and I just started doing things. And there's some things in this that um, helped me to stop procrastinating, so I'll get to those in a second. Number three is a big one for me, is bring music into your life. Every morning my wife and I wake up to music that we love. Right now we're on a Simply Red kick. Remember that band, Simply yes, Red? Yes, love them. Oh, yeah. Love them. Uh, we, wake up, we wake up to a couple of their songs every morning because it reminds us when we first met. And that's the kick that we're on this week. And if you wake up to music that reminds you of great things that happened in your life, you, you set a tone for the day of feeling good and feeling energetic. And if you keep music going, because every time you hear a great song, you go, wow, I love that song, I love that song, and it just gets you pumped. So I, I tell people to bring music into their lives. Uh, number four is focus. Follow one course until successful. And that's a big one for me because back in 2006 I was. I owned an advertising agency. I owned a live theater in Santa Clarita called the Repertory East Playhouse. I was the general manager for a minor league baseball team trying to come to Santa Clarita. I co-owned Peak Models and Talent with my wife. I had three kids. I was coaching baseball for my kids. And, um, and my wife was just diagnosed with cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Goodness. Everything is totally cool now. She's a totally in remission. Everything is great. But at that time, I was a crazy man. And then I said, I have to stop doing what I'm doing, and I focused. And I do one thing now. I do one thing only. I do the rock star system for success. I speak. I write books. But everything is about the rock star system. So I focused, and now everything is easier, and I make way more money than I ever made before. Number five is go and tell no man. I truly believe that every time you tell someone your great idea, little by little it gets struck down, little by little. And mm. so every time you have a good idea, you tell your mom or your dad or your aunt or your uncle or your brother or your sister, and they say, oh, you don't know how to do that, or you don't know how to do that, or it's already been done. And then you, you talk yourself out of this great idea that you had a passion for, and now it's totally gone. So I go and tell no man. I do it first, and then I present it to the world, and it's usually successful. Number six is um, schedule it. I, this, this is going back to stop procrastinating. If you schedule something then, and you tell everyone you're going to do something, then you will do it because you don't want to look like an idiot. So I tell people I'm going to have this product <laughs> I'm going to have this product done by this date because I'm speaking on it. I better have it done because I know 200 people are coming and expecting the product. So if you schedule something like small seminars, tell people that you're going to have something done by then. You, your mind won't let you not do it, so you end up doing it. And then the last one is do something and tell everyone how you did it. And this is basically a coaching program. And basically, I got paid once for writing all these books and writing the system and people come into my seminars and now I have a system how to write a book in 30 days which we talked about before which tells everybody how I wrote the four books in nine weeks and from that I made money on the books and now I'm making money on telling everyone how I wrote the books so we all have information and you know knowledge is the new currency in this world so we have all this information that we all know we're all experts at something we all have knowledge that we know that we need to tell people about and you can 
You all you have to do is tell people what you know, and you can create a coaching program from it. You can create products from it, and and it's a very very big business right now. So, hi Natasha. All right. <laughs> hi Natasha. <laughs> so, She's hiding. So by the way, did did you coin knowledge is the new cur currency? I love that. I, you, you know, that? I saw I saw you write that down, and I said to myself, I no, did I did you? not. I, <laughs> no, 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 no. I will not take credit if it's not mine. I heard that from Les Brown just recently, in fact. I don't know if oh, he coined okay. it. Yeah, I, I like don't know it. if he... I do too, but I don't know. He, I think he even said he heard it from someone else. So I don't know where we heard this from, but I loved it. Yeah, it is. It's very good. I do too. And Melody, yeah. Melody just said, hi, Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> Melody said, hi, Melody Natasha. Melody's saying hi. <laughs> we need a cameo. She needs to step up. <laughs> Come on, Natasha. Say hi. Hi. There she is. All right. <laughs> okay. She doesn't have. She doesn't have. <laughs> but uh, the message you you put out. Where there, are we at? One of the things you said, the message you put out there was everybody is an expert at something or has talent in one area or another, and that's something that we all too often yeah. sell ourselves too short on. Kathy and I are prime examples of that. We both yes. talk to each other about, no, you're better at this than you think you're. Well, no, it's just this. No, it's not just that. You know it. I don't know it. So, And I want to know how you do what you do. It may be easy to you. That makes it even yeah. the better to pre, uh, create a product, an info product, whatever you, whatever your talent lies in, out of that knowledge. So that's very, very uh, yeah. inspiring to hear that for everyone on because... You know, we've all been there. We all think that what we know is just a little bitty thing. No, we all have this bright light to shine that we have a lot of knowledge and experience yes. in our lives, and we can use that. And to let me add something else. Let me add, let me add something else. Um, my wife um, wrote um, a book, a two CD set she did, and an action guide on. It's called Modeling Secrets Revealed. Now she did that because we get 400 submissions a day. She owns a modeling agency. And she said to herself, what can I do to help the people that I can't help get modeling jobs? I can at least refer them how the business works. And she wrote this whole system, but she thought to herself, oh, no one's going to buy this because it's such easy stuff. She doesn't realize that the public doesn't know the basics on how to become a model. No one knows it. She knows it because she's an expert at it. Yeah. But she didn't realize that she's sitting on this information that she because she knows it so well, you just assume that everyone else knows it, and that's simply not true. And we all want to know things, just tell me how you did it, and then I'll just follow how you did it, and then I don't have to waste my time making mistakes. There you go. Uh, it's beautiful. Perfect. Yeah. All right, well, let's, let's switch gears real quick here uh, and talk about joint ventures. Um, you, how would you correlate, you know, joint ventures is a whole topic in its own right, but how would you correlate joint ventures or joint JV as it's often called to the world of rock and yeah. roll well um and I and I use joint ventures a lot I do a lot of joint ventures I believe in joint ventures I, I totally believe in it and I do this one thing in my seminar you know how rock stars always are doing duets now why do rock stars do duets it's because they love each other no I can attest to that it has nothing to do with the love they have for each other but they do it because they're, they want to tap into each other's database, and that's all it is. The marketing team at the record company is saying, how can we get more people, more fans to come and see David Bowie? Hey, let's do a duet with Bing Crosby. You know, I mean, that was so genius, that whole uh, dr little drummer boy, because David Bowie at the time was floundering a little bit, and they said, how do we get him back in the mainstream? And what better way is to go with a, an icon like they, they, you know, um, Bing Crosby and do a, a duet with him on Christmas, a Christmas song. And you know, rock stars do duets. I believe that all entrepreneurs and small businesses should do joint ventures because all you're doing is tapping into each other's database. You're helping each other, and it just helps businesses grow very, very fast. So I do a lot of joint venturing. That's a great, great tip. Well, you know, you. Uh yeah, and you focus a lot on small business and small business entrepreneurs and home-based businesses, people that are self-employed. And Craig, in this economy, you know, it's hard enough to have money to start a business, but it's even harder to save money so that you can do advertising as well. So 
what kind of tips can you share with some of our viewers um, on how they can save money and but still advertise and drive traffic to their website? So, uh, like I said before, I was America's shoestring budget coach, and I still use a lot of those principles in the Rockstar system because I, especially in this recession, a lot of people don't have enough money. And you know, it's really interesting when people put together business plans. They they always have marketing as like the lowest item on the business plan, when marketing should be a major expense that you have for your business plan because you need to get the word out. Uh, building a business and putting a store up is not going to put people in the seats, it's not going to get people to come to your store. You need to get the word out that you exist. But we have this thing called the internet that we've been blessed with because nowadays we don't have to spend money on print advertising and we don't have to spend money on television commercials because we have Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube and blogging. So if you notice, if you go to YouTube right now, all television commercials, if you were to watch a television commercial on television, then get up from your seat and go to your computer and Google the name of the company and probably what you guess that commercial is about, you will see that same commercial on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. And it's totally free. You know, all these corporations are now doing everything on YouTube because this little computer screen that we have right here in the world is really a TV screen. We all think we, all, we, all, we have all converted that the television is now a TV screen. I can watch television shows on my computer. I can do everything that I do almost on TV and more on my computer. So all the corporations in the world are now seeing this. They're putting all their commercials on YouTube. But we, as small businesses that don't have the budget to compete with them to do commercials on TV, can now compete with the big boys on YouTube because all we have to do is do what Will It Blend did. If anyone has seen the Will It Blend videos, oh, yeah. it's for blenders, <laughs> a very boring pro pro product of blenders. This guy or this company has gotten 5 million to 6 million hits, and all they do is show their blenders uh, blending household items or iPhones or iPods or stuff like that. And my wife and I now own a blend deck blender because we saw the YouTube videos and let me just tell you this I wish I had an affiliate for it because it is by far the best blender you will ever own in your life it is that good but anyway uh, it's all about <laughs> it's all about doing weekly YouTube videos just get videos out there updating people on your business giving them a weekly report on whatever you do um, every time you do a small seminar, if you do any speaking, or if you do a presentation, videotape it and put it on YouTube. And, and if you come to my boot camp, I do lots of little tricks that you can do on YouTube to get people to actually see the video and get it up in the search ranking. Um, same thing with Facebook. My business runs basically through Facebook. I use my personal page to create relationships, and then I send them to my fan page where they eventually sign up for my boot camps. There are so many things you can do online, blogging, twittering, all those tweeting, I mean, all those things that you can do to drive people to your website, and that's all you have to do these days. It's all for free, and yet people just don't do it because they feel they don't have enough time or they don't believe in the Internet. Like my friend Tom Antion says, the Internet is not a fad. It is not going away. It is here to stay. <laughs> so get on it and do it, you know. <laughs> Yeah, from a st technology standpoint, I always say this is like the greatest time ever to be alive. This is phenomenal. Yeah. It's so exciting. It is. All right, Kathy. Even with the recession. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's what I love and about let me, this. Let me, just, let me just throw out one thing about the recession. Uh, and okay. it's, in, uh, it's, in, it's in David Bach's book. It's in every book that I read right now. The recession, just so everyone knows, is the best opportunity we are all going to have. We're, we get one opportunity in this life to make tons of money and right now is that time. If you invest in real estate or something, invest in something, invest in the stock, do something because it is going to get better. The trends always go up and down and I know this is the worst one, but they always say most millionaires are made during the depressions or recessions and I'm going to be one of them, baby. All right, love it. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> it's true, it's so true. All right, Kathy, let's let's uh, start to bring us home. We're down to just a few left here. No, I know, but I just, you know, I just wanted to say real quick that, um, Craig, you talk about in your Rockstar book about brand on the run. What the hell oh, is yeah. brand on the run? Kind of, it <laughs> reminds me of that song, you know, that old song. But yeah. Brand, yeah. Brand on the run. 
Yeah. yeah. Right. <coughs> well, yeah. since since it's called the Rockstar System, I had to put something in there about the Beatles. So I called it Brand on the Run, and basically all it is is dressing the part. Like when I was America's Shoestring Budget co Coach, I wore a suit, a uh, suit and tie, and I, I and I did a seminar. And I remember being very stiff on stage, and I walked around like a robot because I had never worn a suit and tie before. But I thought that's what you had to do when you do seminars. So now I dress. You can't see it, but I dress in this rock star clothing. I have ripped jeans on all the time. I, I wear these really cool rock star jackets. And I just believe that whatever your image is, whatever your brand is supposed to be, brand on the run is to wear it all the time. Wear it. Be consistent with your logo. Be consistent with your brand in everything you do, whether it's online, offline, networking. It's just branding on the run. Everywhere you go, everything you do should be about your brand. And, uh, it, and it, when I go to seminars, for example, uh, I walk into down a hallway and I'm walking towards the room and I'm not even a guest speaker, I'm just an attendee there. But people look at me and go and they whisper, is that that rock star guy? <laughs> because my jacket is so outlandish, they're like, it must be, that must be that rock star guy. And, and they're right, because I wear the most outlandish jacket or, or chains or something. And I don't know. So brand on the run is very, very important. Excellent. Not like the Mr. T type chains. <laughs> what was that? Not the Mr. T type chains, right? No, no, no. I haven't, I haven't graduated to that yet. <laughs> well, once again, I want to remind everybody that, uh, you know, we've got a picture of Craig over here on our website just next to us. Click on his nose to get all the information about the Rockstar System for Success. Also, on the, on the banner at the bottom of us, uh, you'll see a nice bright red banner. Either one of those will take you directly to his website. Get all the information you can. If you can at all make it, be sure to do so. It will be, I, you know, everybody calls everything life-changing. This will be business-changing for you. I won't, you know, hype it up. It, it's, it's, it's down to the... It's down to the bare brass tax. It, it's there's no hype. It's it's integrity based and it's a lot of fun as you can see right now. I'm just I'm having a blast doing this right now with just the stories hey. of Axl Rose and all this other stuff that we've been talking about. But it, it's a it's a hoot. You got you got to go. But you will learn incredible incredible a hoot. <laughs> you'll, learn, you'll learn some incredible things uh, when you go. So what we want to do is, uh, Craig, give you an opportunity because you have a huge event coming to Los Angeles, as I mentioned. I do. A three-day Rockstar Marketing Boot Camp this September. Uh, can you tell us yes. a little more about that? I can, but it's now a uh, four-day oh, Rockstar Marketing right. Boot Camp. Oh. Um, so it's September 20th, 23rd, 24th, 25th, and 26th. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, September 23rd to the 26th. It's at the Sheraton Gateway Hotel LAX. Sheraton Gateway LAX. All the information is at craigdoeswalt.com, www.craigdoeswalt.com. Or if you click on my nose, apparently, you can get there, too. <laughs> and, um, and then I have uh, rockstarmarketingbootcamp.com. There's just more information there. But I do have a special offer for all the Internet Citadel people, mm -hmm. if you want to go to the boot camp, it's $997 for a general admission ticket to get into the boot camp. And it's a four-day boot camp this time. And I have Brian Tracy coming. Brian wow. Tracy is like one of the top internet, uh, uh, motivational speakers. I have Tom Antion coming again because I just love Tom and he's so great he at what he awesome. does. Yes. The internet marketing, oh, he's amazing. And then I have Alex Carroll coming. Alex Carroll tells you how to get on the radio and it's just amazing what the radio can do for your small business. How to get onto the radio for free. How to do r radio interviews for free. And Alex Carroll is the master at it and he talks about radio publicity and he's amazing. So I have those three speakers. I have a secret rock star coming, which I can't say yet. Oh. And, I, oh. and, and I have uh, a, motiv a motivational speaker coming that uh, that's pretty wild. Uh, uh, it's not finalized yet, but it, it's he's amazing. And if if he can do what he's doing, we should all be ashamed at anything that we're not doing right now. And I'm trying to get him as well. So, um, but it's a great, great event. Thank you guys for promoting it. And uh, but here's the deal: if anyone signs up. Um, let me just see. What's today? Tuesday? Tuesday? Let's make it, uh, to, if anyone signs up by Friday, and if they in, enter the word Citadel, which is C-I-T-A-D-E-L, in the coupon code, 
They're going to get $700 off the 997 ticket. Oh, my God. So so they get in for $297, and they still get to bring a friend for free if they sign up by Friday night midnight. Oh, my but goodness. If they, so, they, <laughs> so they have to click on my website, and they go to the shopping cart, and it brings them to the shopping cart, and they enter the word Citadel in the uh, coupon code, hit apply, then it goes down seven hundred dollars, and it's in for two ninety seven. Guys, do you think it's worth two hundred ninety seven dollars? Oh my goodness! Oh my, you didn't even you didn't even tell us you were going to do this. This is a complete this. surprise. Are you me? It's a complete oh surprise. My God. I did not. I know. Well, let me tell that, you. That's how we rock. <laughs> so is, you do rock, buddy. You do rock. Let me tell you. This you know this is re- going to be recorded. So as soon as this goes over, it's going to be recorded. So anybody that hears yes. this on the recording until Friday at yes. midnight. Yep. That's unbelievable. It's good stuff, huh? Let me tell you and, what. And I they get Brian, to bring a friend. And they get to be, I'll tell you what, Brian will agree, it's worth more than $997. Oh, yes. So $297, it's like bring bring everybody. That's amazing. <laughs> exactly. That's I mean, a, I'm t- I just, that blows me away. Just I can't be, believe uh, that. Just before you announce it's that, you said. I love it. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Like Brian said earlier, I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna say it has been an absolute delight, Craig. I am so thankful that we met you back in January. Well, I am. I'm too. so thankful that we that we met you again through um, Melody and Marilyn, mm-hmm. the Keemer twins, and just the connection and that you wanted to be on here with us and sharing. We just love you. We just we just love everything that you stand for and what you're yes. putting out there. And for everybody that's listening, I'm not kidding. It is the best time. You learn so much, so many new things, and the guests that he had. By the way, Eddie Money was uh, the rock star guest, and we were there. Yeah. We were yeah. thinking, from what Craig said, he was going to speak to us. The guy went yeah. to this mini concert. It was amazing. He was so was close. That, was that unbelievable? He it was. was unbe- unbelievable. Hey, Eddie, let's just tell your listeners. Let's just tell your <laughs> listeners. Eddie Money was supposed okay. to do a 45-minute yeah. interview with me, and he calls me up that afternoon, and he goes. He goes, okay, I hear you got a lot of people in this room. Do you mind if I bring a couple of guitarists and a backup singer? And I'm like, do I mind? He goes, yeah, I want to do one or two songs. One or two songs. And I'm like, yes, yes. He gets there, and he starts doing songs backstage. And I, he goes, uh, how many do you, want me, do you want me to do more? And I said, do as many as you want. He did nine songs. Yes. I was blown Just away. And his daughter was <laughs> phenomenal. His daughter just popped the Oh, wasn't she amazing? Oh. But, but, you know, you go, to, you go to concerts and you sit back in the nosebleeds and you see him on the big screen. He was so close. Yeah. I could pick out five. Right there. I could, no, pick, I could, see, I could, I could see the sweat. I could see the beads of sweat. Yeah. I could pick out five of his nose hair sticking out. It was incredibly close. It was, it was great. <laughs> yeah, baby. I'll tell him. Let me call him right now and tell him. Yeah. Hey, Eddie. <laughs> Brian what? saw five of your nose hairs. <laughs> I just did the uh, exact uh, same thing as I'm throwing. Glad I, didn't say that. I just did the exact same thing as, as throwing a TV out the door into a swimming pool, didn't I? <laughs> He's gonna nail me. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. All oh right. my god! Exactly. But well, I want to thank you guys so much too. Uh, you guys have been great to me and and uh, and uh, to your email earlier, Brian. Absolutely in September. Thank you. Oh man, that is off the charts. So we will see everybody there in September. So by Friday, that's April 16th. Click on Craig's nose or the banner below, or go straight to CraigDoesWalt.com. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Get there. Get in. Uh, you don't have to sell your car for that, unless it's you know a pretty old car and you only get three hundred dollars for it. But. Uh, <laughs> You know, do what you have to. Get on eBay. Sell something from your house. Everybody has something. You can make $300. Uh, trust us. Uh, yeah. We have the experts uh, right next to me, and I think she's, yeah, I'm pointing the correct way. It's Kathy Stover. No, so, uh, that way. No. But, well, on, <laughs> on, the, on the show, it's you know, like the Brady say, Bunch. Be there, be there, be square, and knowledge is the new currency, baby. There you go. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, guys. So with thank that, you. thank you every to all our viewers that came on again tonight. We look forward to seeing you again next week, um, Brian. As always, mm. thank you for everything you do to put our show together, and thanks again, Craig. We will catch thank you again. Thank you. Soon. Thank you all. Sounds good. We will see you all next week on another great, great show of the Internet Citadel Show. Bye bye for now. Good night. Bye.